Hello and welcome back. My name's Ellie. This is the Curious Stitch podcast and I'm coming to you from Exeter, which is in the southwest of England. So this is part two of my wish list for knitting makes uh, for 24 and 2025. Um, if you missed project or part one, sorry, go and watch that one and then come back and watch this one. Um, as I said in the last one, I will try and link the makers on Instagram and on Ravelry, or the pattern on Ravelry, so that if you don't have access to Ravelry, you can find them on Instagram and see if you can get the patterns on their website or Payhip or wherever it is that they're choosing to sell the patterns. Um, none of the patterns that I'm showing you, I forgot to say last time, are my designs. I am letting myself have a break from designing for the moment. It's still ticking there in the background in my mind, but I'm consciously trying not to work on my designs. I need to have pure pleasure at the moment in my knitting. Um, and it takes the pressure off immensely. So, first video is the first 10 patterns that I want to work on. And this is the second 10 patterns. So these are the ones that I are like my top 20 patterns to work on and to enjoy creating. Um, if I find other patterns during that time, like happened this morning, um, if you watched episode 26, um, it happened and I'm Probably where that will happen because I found my absolute dream jumper. Um, but yeah, go and watch that video. So this is part two, so eleven through twenty wish projects. So um, number eleven is the snip jumper um, by Bristol Ivy. I'll go this side and. When she published this pattern, she was after name suggestions. And I was just like, too, too many comments going through my head. And I, I said to her jokingly, this is the perfect lesbian cardigan. And instantly she got it. So I am making this as my gay pride jumper. And I'm doing the scissors as a gay, as, as the lesbian flag. If you get it, you get it. If you don't, Google it. Um, so yeah, so my main colour, providing I can get more of this colour because I've only got three balls. I'm doing it in acrylic just so that I don't mind if it gets dirty or whatever and I can just chuck it in the machine. So it is this colour. It's Devonte Camel Knitting Yarn. And then from top to bottom of the, the lesbian flag, which I'll try and put here. So that you can see what I'm trying to do. I've got a sort of deep pinky red. This is going to be hard to hold. I've got a warm red, sort of an orangey red. Orange. And then white. <clears throat> Let's do it this way. See if we can hold them like this. Scooch that over. And then I've got pink. I don't have a lighter pink, otherwise I would have put a lighter pink. I've got a light purple and then dark purple. So if you turn it that way up, it's the lesbian pride flag. And I wanted a neutral background. I didn't want black, I didn't want white. Um, so yes, this is going to be my gay pride jumper because <laughs> it's fun. It's not a rainbow. It is the lesbian flag. Now, if you look it up, each of the colors has a different meaning or a, a, a meaning in the pride flag. And there is one which is just five and then one which is seven. I'm doing the seven because it's more meaningful for me. So thank you. doing this pattern i absolutely love it i loved it at the time we had such a laugh talking about it um so yeah that is my 
And that's been jumper. Snip. Five Special Ivy. Moving on is a jumper that I originally bought the pattern for myself, but sort of since Christmas, I've veered away from gothic, all that stuff. I still like witchy things, but more naturey kind of my roots, sort of, you know. So I've got rid of so many patterns, like a stack like this hundreds of patterns that i'm just not going to knit because they are just too gothic or seen as horror or anything else but this one is beautiful and it's the last gothic type pattern that i bought so abby loves it as well so she's going to have this and it's called boneyard sweethearts sweater and it's by telly bean knits who is stephanie lotvin isn't this model pretty i love a good dimply smile so the skeletons on here are white, but the background on them is um, dark green, but Abby would like them to be black and white. Now I'm also doing hers in acrylic because it means that she can wear it to work and not have to worry about it. Because I can just throw it in the wash because she's a tattoo artist. So if it gets sprayed with the ink, it's not a hundred quid, 150 quid jumper, etc. So black and white for the skeletons. And then, check those on there. For the, what you see is yellow here, she wants purple. And you still see it, grey for the body. So that's going to look really pretty. They're all just uh, acrylic yarn that you can get at the range, which is a, like a chain store here in the UK. So yes, so that is going to be for Abby. That's number 12. Number 13 is another 100% acrylic yarn. Now this one, this time the yarn is from Poundland. Now Poundland's acrylic yarn is really good. I cannot stress enough. And when it's things like three balls of four pounds or something or three for two pounds i can't remember exactly but i i bought a huge amount of it I, each time i go in there if it's got new colors or whatever but i'm knitting her the flax jumper and she chose this sparkly pink so this is for neve so this is number 13 she's my lucky number um so the flax is tin can knits i have knit the hat already and i think some flax socks maybe can't remember exactly. Um, so yes, Neve is having a flax jumper. Now this might be number 13, but I'll be knitting things like this one around my own projects and the same with Abby's. Um, I just want to try and knit for myself one, and, one at a time, but projects I make for other people will be scattered sort of thing. Okay, so I will pause here, clear all this off because there's a lot of yarn on my desk and then come back again. Okay, so number 14, I counted backwards. Number 14 on my knitting wish list is another Hohe uh, knitting pattern. Oh, I'm dropping my yarns. And it is the wool and berries pattern so i'm using uh some green dk weight along with some rowan angora haze um i think it's in the graphite colorway or slate so the slate will be the main color and the green will be the stripes that's going to be absolutely beautiful um for my size i need 780 meters of the main color and 195 meters of the contrast color so i only actually need one ball for the contrast i'm making a size two because although i have a very small bust i like to have eight inches at least of positive ease um unless it's a cropped top or a fitted top 
when it's a loose top like this is, I really like to have that airy. I mean, you can see this has got a lot of ease. I love having it airy. Um, I feel more comfortable. Um, so yes. So as I was saying, if you want to knit any any of these along with me, um, just keep watching along on the channel and join in when I do have a sort of you know, a friendly cow. Next along is an, the other hohi pattern that I want to must must knit is the pebble tunic and again I'm doing the size that gives me the, the amount of ease that I want it to have and for my size I need 1097 meters of DK weight but I'm using Tweed Delight which is maybe worsted it's DK worsted um, and I have exactly 1000 meters so I'm 97 meters short but what I figured is if needed um, I could do um, the pocket details or the sleeves or the hem in a, a similar or contrasty color or simply just not make it quite as long um, there are ways around these things that if you are literally like one ball short, I mean, I bought these directly from Hobby and I don't want to do an order for a single skin of yarn from Europe. No. So I will make this work. So this is going to be the pebble tunic and it's so, so similar. It's going to be stunning. So that is number 15. And then a pair of socks that I saw and instantly fell in love with um, is the Harvest Moon Socks by Rachel Majama. Majama, I apologise. I will find you on Instagram as well and link you there. Um, and I want to do them as shown. They're just perfect, absolutely perfect. So for my size... Um, I need, um, one and a half skeins, <coughs> not even that. I need just under half a skein each of the main colour and the contrast colour, and then a mini skein for the heels and toe, um, because I might do those the same colour. I might dye this set for myself and do the heels and toes plain and then the contrast sparkly because I've got some really nice bronze Stellini yarn so that is that one number 17 was a pattern that was gifted to me by my friend Naomi has the apocalyptic knitter podcast i will link it down below and she bought me the raven's wood pattern now there's no cover picture on this pattern so i had just i printed out the ravelry page so it's this one now i absolutely love ravens but but i'm really struggling what colors to do them because i would like the ravens to be black because that's what colour ravens are but I'm tempted to do them not as ravens but another bird however another theory is I could do them black on a like a, a colour this sort of thing as a background and then have a rich chocolatey colour or something similar to the one I'm wearing um, I'm more likely to wear it than if it's just black and white or black and grey or white and grey or you know um so thank you, Naomi, for the pattern. I absolutely love it. And I look forward to knitting that one as well. Uh, 
Okay, so we're getting there, we're getting there. Number 18 is a pattern that I've had for, gosh, nearly five years. Um, when Jen Steingass released the Garden Gate pullover, I jumped on the bandwagon like everyone else, but I didn't cast it on because I like to wait a bit until the hype has gone down with these huge pattern designers. Apart from Hokey, because she has my heart with knitting. So this is the Garden Gate by Jennifer Steingass. And it's just beautiful. It's a stained glass window and a gate all at once to me. So for my size, I need 1,143 metres of the main colour and 147 metres of the contrast colour as a fingering weight. However, um, knowing that my colour work gauge across the bust on that tiny detail amount will be tighter, I'm going up to sport weight. So I'm using Wednesday Down Long Wool Sheep Shop, which is sold as DK weight, but I get sport weight gauge with this. I think this was Aubergine colorway, but it's shade 454 as my main color. And then I'm using Madeline Tosh Pashmina in the, I want to say calligraphy colorway, but that's not right. It might, yes, it is the calligraphy colorway as my contrast so isn't that just stunning so i'm very excited to knit this one i have been for a long time so again if you've knit this feel free to drop a comment and if you want to knit it join in as well like i said i will link instagram and ravelry so yeah And then number 19 is another hokey pattern. That is a pair of socks. So um, a couple of years ago, three years ago, maybe, I can't remember. Time's been weird since COVID. Um, she released the Dreaming of Paris socks and same day purchase. Um, absolutely love them i love the fact they're stripy socks but i also love this little bit of lace detail it's very delicate so i'm using these so the dark charcoal is um regia yak sock and then this one is some very old uh Vulvine yarns it's got her old tags and everything and this is her halo alpaca in fairy hair now, when Kristen's first started dying, I regularly was, hey, hit me up for that, hit me up for that. You know, I think I had about 45, 46 skeins in the first year. I've still got quite a lot of them. And this was one of my precious ones when she was trying out the alpaca halo base. So these are going to be my Paris socks. Ooh. So that's number 19. See, these are all patterns that bring me so much joy and I haven't knit. And I feel like, as a knitter, I've been waiting for the right moment to knit them for the joy, which is just crazy. So, yeah, these are my top 20. Now, the last pattern that is in my wish list to make, wish to knit list, is the Velacore. Yes, by Andrea Mowry. So, I printed it out in black and white that's this beauty so I need it says light fingering weight that is 500 meters per 100 grams no thank you I, no very difficult to get hold of here in the UK so I'm using fingering weight because the extra inch that it might give me that's fine so I'm using Lang Omega, which I got off my friend 
Allen in her do stash. Um, so I've got four skeins of this. And then each of the, the, the stripes, I suppose you'd call them, because in the pattern, there's an option where you do the top two as one colour contrast and then the rest is another colour contrast. And I thought, well, I figured out the yardage for what the stripes will be. And I'm doing a different colour for each stripe. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight stripes. So I have picked eight mini skeins. So I'm going to be doing them top down in this colour order. I need to try and pick them up all together. Ta -da, like that. So if you imagine, can you please do this? Nearly did it. There we go. I think that's going to look really fun. So that is going to be my velocal. Um, so the these mini skeins were all in a mini skein set. I've, I've, I had these ready to ball up and I thought, no, I need to show you first. I bought them as a mini skein set of 10, but I've already used two of them. Um, I cannot remember who the dye was. I apologize profusely. I don't follow them on Instagram because the Instagram handle didn't match their shop name or something. Um, so I was never able to find them and I no longer have the same Etsy account. So I'm terribly sorry. I can't link this yarn. I'm sorry. But that is number 20. So yes, so this one's going to be ever so floofy, floofy, low, not low, um, floaty because it's a cash. It's not a cashmere. It's a acrylic blend. It's polyamide nylon and acrylic so it it feels very silky and it's got a good like it's very drapey so I'm hoping it's just going to sit really prettily with all those colours so yes <clears throat> that is the 20 patterns that I wish to make in the near future let me know of any other patterns that you absolutely love. I'm leaning more towards garments and shawls. Um, nothing lacy. I've had my lacy days. Um, yes, cables, that's fine, etc. Um, because I still have a lot of yarn I can use. Um, I don't think I'll ever not have a yarn stash, but still. Um, I hope I've inspired you just a little bit to create a wish list, not a queue, of things that you'd like to include in your wardrobe and start making them. Um, okay, so that's it for me for today. Um, I will love you and leave you and see you all again soon. Take care, everyone. Bye.